this is kind of a response to Andreas Moss, more in the uh, nature of a response to a question that he raised in the comment section of a video where we were discussing something. Uh, ontology, I guess, fundamentals of ontology. Um, I'd pointed out that I believe that Zapfi had just sort of in the last Messiah, just sort of blasted us with this idea that if the veils uh, of, I don't know, illusion or the veils of um, sublimation, distraction, anchoring, etc. are removed, what is left is a horror that could kill us. Uh, it kills the caveman, apparently. Which raises an interesting question. What's the default position for existence itself? Uh, is there one? Um, Zapfe seems to say that all of all that we do as human beings um, are defense mechanisms to keep our minds off reality itself. It looks that way, I, or read that way, it, or you know, if you read it a certain way, it sounds like that. Now, this is not something that's um, unique to Zapfe. If you read, say, Sartre, nausea. The same sort of idea comes up. Existence itself is repulsive and revolting. Um, you uh, read H.P. Lovecraft, just about anything, and again, you just don't want to know what reality is. The Call of Cthulhu starts off with it, an assertion that one of the nicest things about being human is the fact that we can't correlate everything in our minds, because if we did, we'd go insane. Um, Thomas Ligotti existence itself is horrific. Um, to maintain existence as a crime or a huge mistake, yada yada. Um, and if you read something like The Red Tower, where The Red Tower is existence itself on this blank landscape of nothingness, um, the best thing to do is to just keep it non-existence in its pure state, because existence is horrific. We want to so long as we exist, we want to distract ourselves from existence, because existence is fundamentally horrific. That's sort of the bedrock of that point of view. Um, and regardless of whether or not uh, Zapfe is prescribing his four defense mechanisms, he's saying that that's all we have, really, because anything to keep our minds off things. Okay. I understand that, and if you've ever had a moment, or more than a moment, of existential panic, which I have had, um, you, you can really, that really resonates with you, this idea that I don't want to know what the truth is at its basic level. It's horrific. It's just this big black hole of horror that is endless. Okay. That's one side of the equation. Um, if you look at, say, Camus in the myth of, myth of Sisyphus, where a supposedly hellish condition is actually shown, when you look at it a certain way, is a nice thing, as, wow, <laughs> I all i got to do is the same thing over and over again, and it doesn't really matter because it's just going to keep happening, and I'll just go along with it, because there's nothing else to do, and there's just the here and now, and uh, this is okay. Um, it's a sort of a bad translation of the myth of Sisyphus, but, you know, I think most people agree that it's generally positing the idea that existence itself is good, or at least more than bearable. Um, if you look at, or my favorite juxtaposition here is between, say, um, Sapfe's Last Messiah, where he says this is what we do as human beings to keep our minds off the fundamental reality, as uh, the Chandogya Upanishad. Um, you know, it's a, some people see it as a religious text, so they're gonna, their minds are going to shut right off the bat when you mention this. But it's an interesting thing in that it says... What you want to do <laughs> is remove all those things. Um, you want to remove things like sublimation, distraction, um, anchoring, and uh, isolation. You want to actually 
peel those things away. The um, metaphor used is an onion. You want to remove the layers of the onion, and what's left is, well, it looks like it's nothing, but uh, thou art that. Shved, that can't do. You are what is the ultimate essence of that onion. And you want to actually be that way. That's the state that we fundamentally are. So they agree that that nothingness is our fundamental state, but what they disagree on is the value that we place on it. To Sopfe, it's uh, nothingness is horrific. Uh, it's just a black void. Uh, to the ancient rishis who wrote the Upanishads, or that particular Upanishad, or who you know got into Advaita Vedanta. Uh, they said, this is what we want. And it's another paradox, is that you, you want to get there, but the only way to get there is to not want to get there. Anyway, that's another story. Um, but, again, the aim seems to be to do the exact opposite of what Zapfi says we want to do. Because the goal is that state of non-distraction, non-sublimation, non-isolation, you know, and uh, what's the fourth one? I can't remember. Um, this is what we want. It's the polar opposite, apparently, of what Sapfe is saying. Now, if you want to have a fascinating um, paradox to somehow resolve, I would say that's about as fascinating as they get. Why do we have someone telling you that the supreme goal of existence is to knock away all of our biases, props, etc. Once you get there, um, everything will be resolved to your infinite satisfaction that this is what you want. It's some idea, I guess, of the, you know, some parallel to the uh, Christian idea of heaven. Or, um, I don't know, just a wonderful, unbelievably positive, affirming state, place, existence, whatever you want to call it, whatever word you want to uh, put onto it to describe that which is fundamentally undescribable. Or is it, as Sapfe says, or as uh, Ligotti, I guess, would say, or any of these people, you don't want to go down there. You don't want to see what's there when you peel the layers off that onion. In fact, the only logical thing to do is to make sure that you never have to know or face what's down there. Because existence is the red tower. Existence is delving too deep and waking up the uh, the um, Balrog or Cthulhu or something like that. What's down there, you don't want to find it. Uh, let it, let this beast sleep forever in its cave, subterranean or suboceanic cave, um, and hopefully you die before that beast awakens. And on the other hand, we have the idea that what's down in the cave is not a beast at all. What's down there is wonderful, and we want to release it. We want to be that uh, thing. It just looks to us with our prejudices and our desires and our sublimations and distractions and anchoring and this kind of thing, isolations, it looks like a beast because we're welded, wedded, I guess, to all these distractions, to all these defense mechanism and mechanisms, and that's what turns um, the pure land of the West, I guess, as the Buddhists would call it, into um, Ligotti's horrific red tower. Um, two completely different ideas as to what is uh, on the end of the rainbow. What exactly will you find when you strip reality down to its fundamentals? 
as I say, reconciling or resolving that paradox is something that I find unbelievably fascinating. We can take sides or we can try and find some way of reconciling the two points of view where maybe they're both right. Um, and again, what does that do? That That's the tennis ball straight back at us. We've got no other place to look after that but in the mirror.